Welcome back. You're still watching Daybreak, and as promised, it's time for the press review at half past seven. Let's take a quick look at the front pages, beginning with our sister publication this morning. This day, well, it's leading with uh, IMF Fitch welcomes CBN's interest rate hike, say policy decision good. Friends, family, remember Chizoba Cheesy. We go in heartfelt tribute services as in the yellow box there this morning. But just above that, in that black strip, Reuters, uh, Dangote to establish oil trading arm for Lagos Mega Refinery. And above the masthead this morning, federal government opened talks with AFDB for funding of multi trillion Nara coastal Trans Sahara highways. That's uh, this day, this morning. The Punch newspaper is focusing on food smuggling. It says a federal government intercepts 141 grain trucks and drivers threaten strike over attacks. Uh, the leading photos there just show some of the uh, ESCC during the seizure of 21 trucks. At the bottom, there's an interesting story from the Manufacturing Associations of Nigeria. 767 manufacturers shut down in the country in 2023 alone. That's the punch. The Guardian this morning says consumers are switching to used gadgets as FX crisis worsens tech adoption. And there's a breakdown there from laptops to smartphones, uh, featured phones, uh, smart watches, smart TVs, refrigerators, the list is long. Uh, other stories here. No country provides equal opportunities for women, World Bank asserts, and that's the Guardian. The New Telegraph this morning, focusing on investor confidence in the country. Man tackles federal government over expert trade employment levy. At the bottom there, Sharia Council to the federal government tackling corruption address prevailing situation in Nigeria. Meanwhile, Afeni Farah says President Tunubu has no excuse not to restructure Nigeria. That's the new telegraph. Let's see what the new leadership is saying this morning. Only drastic actions can save Nigeria's economy. That's according to Mohalu. And dollar video, only ESC can prosecute Gandu J. That's according to the court, the leadership for you this Wednesday morning. Some international papers this morning. We begin with the Daily Express. A big story on its front page, the Daily Express. Hunt's tax cuts gamble will put 900 pounds in workers' pockets. How would that happen? We'll take a look at that later shortly. Well, the speculation about the measures uh, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt is to include in Wednesday's budget leads many of the papers on its national scene this morning. So let's bring in our, our an analyst, a journalist and social commentator, Dr. Constance Ikoko, who we are very proud to have in the studio with us this midweek uh, edition of the show. Great to see you, as always. Great to see you at this one, uh, Nkechi. It's uh, a girl squad this morning. Yeah. 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 Where's Indy? <laughs> <Where's> Indy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Dr. Ikoko, when you pick up a copy of the of our sister publication this day, this morning, you cannot miss that story about the federal government opening talks with AFDB for funding of multi-trillion Naira coastal train and all of that. Um, some would wonder if that's a priority right now. I don't know. What do you think? Well, um, priority might not be the word. You have, you have to do several different things at the same time. Um, we have been talking so many years about... Um, easing movement of goods and services within Africa. We are not going to be a country that runs on its own. Mm -hmm. African trade is very important, regional and continental. And so that story talks about the highway 700 kilometers, starting from Lagos, passing through Ogun, Ondo, Delta, Akwai, Bom, Port Harcourt, uh, Cross River. There is the Ogoja and uh, Cameroon leg of it. And, um, you know, the, the aim is to boost trade and investment, hospitality, um, agricultural production, a lot. And, you know, Africans have to begin to travel 
within their continent. And I think this also plays into the bigger vision of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which was established in 2018. Mm -hmm. 44 out of uh, 55 African countries have signed on to up to it. And again, it is about reducing trade barriers on the continent. I give you an example of why this is very important. If you want to fly from Africa to uh, one African country to the other, it's so expensive and sometimes chaotic that it's even easier to fly to Europe and come back here. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who wanted to come from Barcelona, Spain to Nigeria and then we go together to uh, Angola and she found that it was cheaper to fly from Europe to Angola rather than from Nigeria to Angola. Why is this going to be happening? Okay, if we do not have the easy um, flight routes, why can't we have the roads and rails? So this is an important project and I think, you know, in the whole of Africa, we should begin more to think of about how to make it easy for us to move capital, trade, human beings from one country to the other. Yeah. Dr. Ikoku, something that should be of priority right now, still on this day, that story is on the punch as well. Manufacturing Association of Nigeria say 335 manufacturing companies became distressed and over 700 shut down in just 2023. What can we say about this development? What is making all these manufacturing companies to be distressed or sh uh, shut down uh, their companies? It is a distressing story. We don't even have a highly industrialized country. And then the few manufacturing companies that you have are shutting down in the light of the uh, um, you know, poor economy, which in eight years and then in ninth years has been really struggling. And that conversation came up um, when uh, they were discussing about the new levies, uh, export trade levy that was set up by the federal government, $10,000 and $15,000 for staff and directors of foreign companies. So the, uh, the director general of uh, manufacturing Association of Nigeria was saying that that's a punitive levy and so he explained that because of similar policies Nigerian companies have shut down and so he was saying that it would deter investment and then prevent Nigerians that want to hire foreign nationals in certain areas that they need expertise. In fact he says that it will be um, you know, uh, it, it will hamper the ease of doing a uh, business. It's a, it's a very bad, you know, development that companies are shutting down. Obviously, you can see the impact of policies over the mm -hmm. years. It mm -hmm. did not start today. So hopefully the federal government is listening and watching and discussing with the manufacturers to see ways to continue to ease business in the country. You do need your local manufacturers because then people can buy local. Indeed, you know, people have argued that while the president shorts us to get foreign direct investment, there has to be the component of the local sector as well. I mean, you're trying to attract investors to come in, but what's happening to the investors within? They have to go peri pursue. And this was a very good point. Um, small and medium term enterprises are the bulwark of any country. If mm -hmm. you go to the U.S., it's the same thing. You need to support them. You need to make the environment very conducive for them because they will be the ones that, um, uh, um, that employ more labor. Federal government cannot employ uh, so many people. Mm -hmm. And so this is a critical area that needs to be looked at. And, you know, I think the man has always cried about lack of support. You know, something needs to be done about it. Mm. Well, let's flip to another paper, the New Telegraph, and this is coming from the uh, pan Europa Social Cultural Group, Afani Ferry, the New Telegraph. Uh, they are saying that President Tinubu has no excuse to restructure Nigeria. Um, at this way, Afani Ferry has been an organization that is consistent. From day one, they have been consistent about their views on Nigeria. They prefer a Nigeria that is regionalized, a Nigeria that practices true federalism, a Nigeria that doesn't suffocate different parts of the country. And this issue is important because you also remember that President Tinubu was of this school of thought mm -hmm. when he was Lagos State Governor, and that is why he fought President Obasanjo to a standstill. And so now he is president, and they are saying, do not forget. Nigeria is a country of many countries. Mm -hmm. You want to recognize the differences and you want to have a loose federation that allows people to chart their own path. 
Nigeria doesn't have a common vision and a common direction. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're going one foot forward and ten steps backward. Mm -hmm. So you want to decentralize and allow the country to grow in the way that it makes more progress and people can thrive. It's, I think it's a very critical discussion. And another critical discussion, if you take a look at the leadership, Kingsley Mohalu is saying only drastic measures or actions at this point can save Nigeria's economy. And some of those measures, he's saying the president just needs to rejig his cabinet and also to go after bank CEOs over forex manipulations, just to mention a few. What are some of your thoughts on some of the issues that he raised or some of the drastic actions that can be taken to save our economy? Well, Kingsley Moa, an economist, and um, he used to be deputy governor at the Central Bank, uh, you know, well-traveled, um, understands the issues. And so what he's saying is, is not out of place or out of order. He's telling the president, you know what, at this point, it's only eight to nine months, but you have to review what you're doing. If you have a cabinet that is not functioning, a cabinet that is not taking you to delivery, then you have to move it around. If you have to fire some people and rehire some people, then that is what you need to do. But when you look at the story, the president that s then says that the economy is not in distress. I don't know where he is or what world he's living in. The economy definitely is in distress. It does not mean that um, we cannot turn it around. It's very possible, and that's why economists and concerned Nigerians are giving their advice and suggestions about what can be done. Mm. In a couple of minutes, Dr. Okoku will be thrown to our Lagos studios to see what the Morning Show team has for us in store. Uh, but if you can, in like two minutes, perhaps we can make this together. In The Guardian this morning, their big story is that uh, Nigerians are switching to use gadgets. It's no brainer, but I want to ask you, what is fueling this and then on the other hand in the international scene very quickly jeremy hunt's tax court what is going on what is he doing so high cost of living is fueling you know the, the first story that you mentioned people are more concerned now about basic essentials food um shelter you know rent and school fees mm -hmm. you know there's no there's no need or you know there's no need to be buying expensive gadgets now mm -hmm. the last time uh, so why don't you go for cheaper gadgets than used gadgets uh, i'm trying to understand the rationale here so, you understand? The, so the story says that the last time they had a, a large container mm -hmm. of uh, the, uh, the importation of such devices was in the last quarter of 2022 okay. and that is because the prices have gone over 200 mm. percent it can be that that's a lot, yeah, that's a lot. so you know not much is coming in so people are op opting for you know fairly used devices which are cheaper at the same time and then to the Tory stories this mm -hmm. is an election yeah mm -hmm. everyone is wanting to woo uh, voters and one of the easiest way is to, is to tell them that you are going to uh, cut taxes in the light of of the economic crisis that is you know across the world actually Indeed. if you have watched europe there have been many protests going on from one country to the other people you know fighting over energy crisis which then affects their, their purchasing power or their take-home pay um so yes it is a story where they are saying we will do this and then you also remember that it looks like the tories have been damaged politically hmm. after how many uh, years in power so they have to do a lot in order to tell voters or convince voters that they are the party to beat at the end of this year or, or in January mm. when the elections hold. Well, we'll see if that cut, putting more money in people's pocket, helps or boosts the hope of Tories in the election. Thank you so much, Dr. Ekoku, for joining us this early morning as usual.